So I went back and I just made some notes today. So in 2020, and you want to see where Avengers and Star Wars especially, where they're getting these, these phantom numbers. What's really driving this? Like we talked about, this is Disney paying itself. Let's go back and look. In 2020, the annual return or the annual report to shareholders for the fiscal year of 2020. Remember, Disney Plus launched a couple of weeks into the beginning of that fiscal year. Okay. And then, of course, we hit COVID. We got six months worth of COVID in this first fiscal year. Disney reported $10.552 billion after recasting some of the financial data for that fiscal year for DTC, direct to consumer. Their operating income was a $2.9 billion loss. All right. Everybody remember that number. 2021 revenue for DTC, $16.319 billion. This is the year, this is the fiscal year that would have run from October 1st of 2020, okay, right in the heart of when the pandemic was going on, and then all the way through September 30th of 2021. COVID this is also months. when we hit the highest point on the stock, right? Uh, in that era, yeah. yeah. In, around the, Because Disney Plus was exploding with subscribers, yeah. right? right. $16.319 billion in revenue that year. $1.6 billion in operating income losses. So again, the first year, that means that if they had a $10.5 billion revenue and about a $3 billion loss, they spent roughly $13 billion making content, advertising, and running Disney+. Plus In 2021, they would have spent about $18 billion making content, advertising, and technologically running Disney+, Plus and Hulu. 2022. Now, this is a key year, and everybody pay attention right here, right? Because we talk about where did all the phantom money come from? Where does the Star Wars profit money come from and the Avengers profit money come from? It's because they license their own products to themselves. And if Netflix was going to pay them $100 million to license a film after it got out of the theater, then Disney Plus is going to say, well, we're going to pay competitive market rates and license the same film for $100 million. Exactly. In this case, Disney Plus is doing this in perpetuity. 2022, the tax year for Disney in 2022, again, would have begun October 1st of 2021. What had just happened? They went back to theaters. Black Widow, Shang-Chi, The Eternals. Those did great. Yeah. And then the following year, we got Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, right? We also got Spider-Man No Way Home, which although well, that not was Sony. belonging to Disney, but it goes go to, to Disney, Disney Plus. Plus. No, it didn't at the time. How long did it? No, it was a while. It was a while before it got there. I don't even know if they still have it. Okay, so at the time, that was the last movie that was under contract between Sony and Stars, because the following year, everything that came out beginning at the, at the start of 2022 for Sony would, was, was then going to Netflix. That's when the Netflix contract began. So Spider-Man No Way Home was the last movie that was promised, and that's one of the reasons it came out when it did, because the contract with Stars demanded that they were going to get another Spider-Man movie from Sony before the right, end of the right. contract. That's what they were paying for, was Spider-Man. So that went to stars. It didn't get to go to Disney Plus, uh, at least not. If, if it did, it was much later. I don't remember. But remember what, what I'm remembering though is they spend a huge amount of money to get it on Disney Plus. That's what I remember. Later on, yeah, I don't think they got it. I, I don't think Stars allowed Sony to split the deal unless Disney wrote Stars a fat monster check because Disney got that puppy for 18 months. I mean, excuse me, Stars would have gotten it for 18 months. The whole pay one window. That was the deal with Sony at the time was the pay one window for 18 months. But anyway, that year. $19.5 billion in total revenues for DTC. $4 billion in losses. That means that year. Disney spent. They took in $19 billion in revenues, $19.5 billion in revenues for DTC. They spent $24 billion, roughly, in content, licensing, production, running Disney+. Plus. That's when all the Marvel stuff started hitting the theaters again. $1.6 billion the year before in losses. Right. $4 billion the next year once theaters opened back up and Disney really started consuming everything that it was making. That's where these numbers are coming from. That's where the Star Wars numbers and the Avengers numbers and Marvel and all this kind of stuff. And is, that's what is, freaked out investors, too, and freaked out the board, yeah. apparently, and turned them against JPEG. Yep. Uh, that was a big part of it. You know, 2023, $19.8 billion in revenue. Uh, and a $2.4 billion loss. Again, 
they're not spending that much money just in producing original content. There's literally hundreds of millions of dollars baked in there every year, I'm sure. Well, here, here's a fun thought Paying for you, licensing though. back for the Avengers and paying licensing back for Star Wars. Here's a fun thought. So their revenues were increasing that that all the years that we talked about. Mm -hmm. So were their expenditures. The expenditures were just essentially money passing from one pocket to the other. Now, think about it this way. If Disney had not done what they did to Gina Carano, and if they had not decided to go straight headfirst into the culture war, it is easily foreseeable that all Disney had to do was maintain their expenditures at whatever level they, they had been, right? So get it back down to $16 billion, for example. Yep. That's, that's a huge amount of money to spend. But all they had to do was keep it at that level, and then surely subscriptions and surely revenues would have outpaced them dramatically. Mm -hmm. Instead, this is the big thing, and it's not where you were going, uh, but this is, uh, this is just huge for the audience to understand. This is the cost of the stuff like they did with Florida. Mm -hmm. This is the cost of stuff like Gina Carano. If they would have just been a normal company, a nonpartisan company, and just held their expenses at where they had been, they would have been making billions and billions in profit every year because they didn't do that. The cost is that they've had to take draconian cuts and remove everything they can, right? You got to get you got to get Moana into being a movie now because we can't have that on the Disney Plus ledger. You got to get all these this other stuff. The Mandalorian's got to go. It's got to be a movie now because we Skeleton can't Skeleton Crew on disappeared. It. Skeleton Crew's got to be pushed to the next fiscal year. Yeah. All of that is because they became partisan and therefore they could not increase their revenues dramatically like they could have if they would have just stayed as a normal, non-political, family-friendly company. Yep. They didn't have to, and, and again, I keep reminding folks, two years ago, when they were peaking with this, you know, billion dollars a quarter in losses on Disney+, Plus, there was even a question after the earnings call about, you know, we thought that Disney was going to launch its streaming service and could rest on its enormous library alone. Like, it didn't have to spend... $15 billion a year or whatever, $10 billion a year producing original content. I mean, it, it didn't have to go overboard like this. Um, it, 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 it probably would have done just as well. Look at what everybody's watching on Disney+. Plus: Reruns, movies that come out of the theaters, Bluey. I, Bluey. I mean, that, that's the, <laughs> Bluey, yeah, Bluey, 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 Bluey. You know, it's like, does Disney need to make a bunch of Marvel shows? No, they suck. They all suck. Um, nobody has watched these things. Nobody cares about this. And yes, I do think, I think it's going a long way to actually destroy the brand. Um, yeah. In addition to the crappy movies they put in the theaters. Same thing with Star Wars. They, they had something special with The Mandalorian. And I think that's largely because of Jon Favreau. Uh, they had something special with it, at least through the first two seasons, and then they crashed it. And now they want to try to parlay this into a feature length film. Good luck with that. I don't think this is going to go what they what they hope it will. But well, this is think about it. Think about you introduced Grogu in 2019. You're going to bring back this character for the finale of, of whatever saga it is, so you can put it in the Ray movie, by the way. But you're going to bring it back in 2026. That's seven years. The yeah. kids who were excited about Baby Yoda aged out of it. Yeah. And and whatever was left, they got shanked in season three because you could we could see what the oh, numbers were for that. Well, once once he once he was close to Lizzo like that, nobody wanted to be near no. that little puppet. The book Book of Boba Fett did a lot of damage, and then season three just put the. I don't know. I thought the, the rainbow coffee. colored Vespas were really really enticing, intimidating even. Make sure you're subscribed to Valiant Renegade and join us every Sunday at six p.m. Eastern for the live show.